Thank you, gentlemen. Let me uh, explain something to you about this. Uh, tonight, not only do we have fine guests like Catherine O'Hara, uh, we also have uh, Alba Ballard and her costumed parrots and uh, the Audience Academy Awards. In most countries, uh, they would force this into three different shows. Uh, here in America, <laughs> I'm serious, in uh, Czechoslovakia, this would be three separate shows, and you'd be hunting uh, for days in your TV guide to find all three. But that's why this country is so darn great, because one... <laughs> One show, not only the Academy Awards for the audience, Catherine O'Hara, but also Alba Ballard and her costumed parrots. My first guest is one of the most talented comedy performers, or as Paul says, performers, around today. Her work on SCTV is certainly unforgettable, and uh, to remind you of how unforgettable it is, let's take a look right now at some of the things she has been responsible for during the run of that fine comedy program. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Catherine O'Hara. You look very nice. Oh, thank you. Thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. Thank nice you. to see you it's again. It's fun. This show's it? great. I can't wait till we get in Toronto. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Is, uh, we're going to Canada soon. Yeah. Uh, now, tell me about that dress. What's the material there involved? <laughs> Animals. No, if it's... Uh, cows. I'm sorry. It's, it's leather, isn't it? Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, it's very nice. Now, is that... Um... Japanese leather. The cows were massaged. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, you, you look, you look, <laughs> you look, you look very nice. Thank really, you. they actually said this is Japanese leather in the cast. Yes, they yeah. they massage the cows to make it. Very uh, soft. What are you What are you doing now that uh, you're you're not on uh, the program? Are you? No, I'm no, not. No, that's too bad. What What have you been doing <laughs> since? I've been uh, sleeping a lot, and uh, auditioning, learning how to audition, and uh, trying to do that. Now, uh, when I said too bad, I mean it's too bad because we miss seeing your work on the show. That's what I meant. Oh. Now, now, when you go out, uh, it, it, it's, it's hard for me to imagine you having to audition, though, because that's a pretty good audition, what we just saw. Well, though. I'm not used to it because um, I got in Second City in 73. That's the last time I really auditioned. And uh, since then, it's all been work that I'd get. I'd either do Second City or somebody would ask for me from the show, and I wouldn't have to audition. But mm -hmm. since I left the show, I've had to... Actually, I got called to audition for a play off Broadway, and, and they asked me to audition because they, they'd seen me on the show and they really liked me from that, but they didn't know whether I'd be able to do a play or not. What was the play, can you say? Uh, it was called um, Middle Ages. Oh, I didn't get the part. But, uh, uh, they were so excited to see me there, and they really went out of their way to track me down to get me to the audition because they liked me from the show, and I thought, why don't they just give me the part there instead of making me audition? But... Um, I got there and they were so grateful that I'd showed up and they kept saying thank you, thank you and talking about everything that I'd done on the show and they loved me and then I read for them and blew it. Uh, <laughs> now what went wrong I there? Just, I don't know, I just was not used to audition. auditioning. Seems what was the nature really of the unnatural part? To me. What did you have to do? It was a great part. It was, um, it's a girl, it, they, it's four people and they're two parents and two younger people and it it's, takes place in a country club and uh, the two uh, younger people go from the age of 14 to the age of 40. And so I read two scenes, one where I was supposed to be in my 40s and one where I was supposed to be 14. And I was just so stiff. And uh, I wasn't used to being on a stage and having to move around. And I was standing just straight for the whole audition. At one point, I thought, oh, I better move. And I turned around just walked, moved right in a circle. I had nowhere to go and just <laughs> turned around and looked back at them. And, and uh, just the worst. So Good. then somebody told me about this book called Audition, written by Michael Shirtcliffe, and I still don't know what I'm doing with auditions, but this book An actual is manual to help you. It's great. It's yeah. the best. What kind of things do they suggest? Well, he has 12 guideposts. I shouldn't even... I don't even know. Now, what, what do they say about uh, circling on stage like you did? Is that anything you want to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should have got me the part. <laughs> it should have worked. <laughs> that was the thing that should have worked. No, they have... Uh, he has these guideposts and their relationships, and you're just supposed to think about, you know, what you want from the other person, and... He says, always think that you love the other person rather than not liking them or loving because if, if you go for something positive, that will give you so much more to work with. And Oh, I can't even explain. The thing that was great about the book for me, I still don't know how to use it exactly or how to audition, but it just gives you so much to think about that you forget about yourself for a while. Yeah. And, uh, so have you, have you had much luck uh, since the book? Oh, no, I went and read for another film a couple of weeks ago, and there was nothing in the book about what do you do if you show up 
and the leading man is there to read with you, and you think he's cute. Yeah, who was the... Then you can't... Uh, <laughs> I couldn't talk. Who was the leading man? Uh, I should... <laughs> no, you, you could say, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I guess I couldn't yeah. make any more a fool of myself than I did at the audition. It's Steve Martin. He did this. They're doing a film. Well, that would, uh, that would certainly uh, make you jittery, oh, yeah. I would think. That... I thought I was really psyched up for it. I thought I prepared, but... He was the, I, I, Arthur Hiller's directing, it's called Lonely Guys, a great script, boy, it'll be a funny movie. And you, you, you know for a fact you didn't get the part. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, <laughs> what nasty hussy did get it? Do you have any idea? <laughs> I'm sure someone great who deserved it more than me. No, you But I, I thought I did all right on the reading part. I'm sure I didn't do well enough, but at least I wasn't too nervous about that, but I just couldn't handle the conversational part. Arthur Hiller was so nice, and he. Oh, you mean I can't just? I believe I'm telling you this. Hope you mean just, you, the, the reading part, the actual script reading, you did okay. Yeah, I did. Well, I thought I did all right, uh -huh. at least better than I've ever done. And what's before. the other part? It wasn't good enough for the for them, but but the uh, just the chatting, and they were so nice, and they're being really funny and entertaining me, and I was just. Huh. <laughs> and Arthur Hiller said, "You're from Toronto, you know. I I was in uh, Toronto. I went to school in Toronto." I go, "Oh, really?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's I to gave me. nothing. I was just, I just I sat there. That's what I, I would do that pretty much. Uh, I mean, there anyway. Was, there was one, I'm sorry, there's one scene. Uh, I thought I did the reading. Okay, so one scene is, is all about an orgasm, and, and he's, <laughs> I shouldn't give away a scene, but he's doing something that okay. isn't sexual, really, but it, it's turning her on. And, and this whole scene, you have to keep having orgasms, and, and I just couldn't. I mean, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> This, I is a, do this is a I real have... movie. It's you checked them out. It's a real no, movie. I... <laughs> I think everyone auditioned naked. I wasn't the only one. <laughs> no, no I, uh, I, I, I just the more I tried to do, uh, you know, lines like, "Oh, stop! It's too good. It's yeah. too wonderful." I just all I, I ended up sounding like my mother. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't be natural trying to have an orgasm no, with this would... actor and these two people. And I was like, "Oh, stop! You're oh, you're wonderful." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have to stop here for just a second, but we'll be back. Uh, more with Catherine O'Hara. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Catherine O'Hara obviously is here. Last time you were on the program, we talked about you staying up all night. You do that a lot, huh? Yeah, a little too much. I keep uh, the same hours as other people, just, no, different hours. I'll stay up till 6 in the morning and then sleep 8 hours. You'll sleep from 6 until, uh, what time does that make it in the afternoon? I don't know, you figure it out. That'd be 2, wouldn't it? <laughs> 6 to noon is, is uh, 6 and uh, 2 is 8. I guess so. Yeah. Now that seems... Uh, I believe you. Now what do you do all night? Is this, uh, are you working or... Uh... Um, yeah, I'm trying to write. I, uh, after auditioning for a lot of things and not getting them and getting offered things I don't want, I've decided I'll try to write something. Maybe yeah. that's the only way I'll get something. And, uh, I've been, um, singing. Singing? <laughs> yeah. I had a chance to you do a... You had a record deal, right? Yeah, I had a chance to do a record. Actually, when they found out, it was supposed to be a comedy album, when they found out I was going to sing more than talk, they changed it to a demo. Now, what is now the, I have a chance for a demo. Now, now, what, <laughs> now what does that mean? You get it, you, what is it? Well, you put, I guess, four songs or whatever you want to do on a tape, and uh -huh. they either buy the idea or they don't. Oh, well, still and all. Now, you, you say you've been offered things that you don't want any part of. Now, what are some of those? Oh, I shouldn't say. Sure. No, no, just um, no, films or I had a ch No, most of the, actually, most of the offers are very open, like a chance to do a special or, you know, a TV special. You don't want to do a TV special? I guess, someday, but... But not today. <laughs> Well, that's a, like a pretty good deal, that's, uh, don't you think? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. What else? Yeah, what? just things come up. I guess um, on February we did a fun thing that uh, my brother had this party for Valentine's. He had one around Christmas, and we got this orchestra together and a bunch of singers, and we did uh, sort of holiday songs at Christmas. Then we did another one Valentine's Day, and uh, it was all romance songs. And John Candy emceed the evening. Mm -hmm. It was at the Palais Royal, big ballroom on the Lakeshore in Toronto where my mom and dad had their first date. And uh, we sang love songs, and, and um, John Candy hosted, and Martin Short, who was in SCTV, right. sang uh, Got the World on a String and Funny Valentine. And Is that the kind of singing you do yourself? I guess, well, I love old love songs. Yeah. I, did a, I did one that was, um, it was a Marilyn Monroe song. I've got my nerve. And uh, <laughs> it was great. Uh, the best part of it was the male backup on this song. It's called Kiss, and, and the guys will go, kiss me, hold me, kiss. Love me, T 
take me, hold me. <laughs> Four guys in tuxedos did that for the whole song. And then near the end, they go, this, this is the moment all thrill me. And the girls, thrill me, thrill me, mm, with your charms. Take me, take me in your arms and make my life perfection. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd buy this record. It's a lovely very nice. song. Thank you very much, Kathy. Oh, Appreciate you. you coming back. Catherine O'Hara, ladies and gentlemen. We have to go away for station identification. We'll be back to hand out more audience mm -hmm. more. I need, to, I need to make one, one other announcement. With the gentleman who brought the manta ray, please retrieve it. We are not allowed to clean rays or skates. Now, this is not our policy. This is an RCA Corporation policy. Once again, my apologies for the inconvenience there. Uh, my next guest is certainly one of the funniest people on television today. When he is not appearing on this show, he can be seen on SCTV, also on this network. Let's take a look now and uh, see a little bit of Martin Short in action on that program. Ladies and gentlemen, watch the monitors, and at home, as always, use your television sets. Has this ever happened to you? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Martin Short. Martin, how are you? Nice Thank to you. see you again, sir. Well, that's, uh, that's very funny. That's Thank you. Really nice, and you, uh, uh, you do terrific work on the show. And, oh, thank and you. thanks for coming back. Um, you, in addition to stuff like that, you do some people, uh, not, not famous characters, but characters that you have invented. Uh, Ed Grimley? Ed Grimley is a character that I do, um, uh, kind of a visual character. He kind of talks like this, you know, and his hair is up. You really have to have the whole visual get it, Dave. But no, his, his hair is up. I mean, it's, it's way up, isn't it? It's stuck up this high, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's that concept of <clears throat> when in doubt, go big and physical and don't worry about the words. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now, uh, now, did you ever know anybody with his hair way up there? What, what is no, the, no, well, uh, actually, but uh, you, you find that you get these characters from uh, people you know. There was a guy who used to live uh, below my brother named Craig Steubing, and he was kind of an 80s um, s screamer. He was an 80s <laughs> screamer. Uh, kind of a, he was a designer, really. <laughs> and it's, it's not so, it's more of a wine 80s, you know, the kind of uh, stereotypical screamer of the 60s that Jonathan Winters did, uh -huh. for example, yeah. is out. <clears throat> you know, now it's more whiny, it's more tired, exhausted. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I just have problems with it generally. I mean, that's a general attitude. Uh -huh. I, mean, I was once, <laughs> I was once passing his apartment. He lived below my, uh, below my brother, and, and this is truthful, he, he was a designer, and he used his apartment as a, an office, and I heard him screaming on the phone, he was angry, uh -huh. <laughs> and he had said, I had ordered a Peggy Lee White, now what the hell goes here? <laughs> a Peggy Lee White. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I took that voice completely and did it on stage in, in Second City. Yeah. And actually, uh, uh, I used to do a routine as a hairdresser. Actually, you can help me with this. If, oh, goody. When I point to you, yeah. you say you're kidding. Okay. So he's doing someone's hair and he's saying, you know, I know Liz, per Liz Taylor personally. You're kidding. Absolutely. I remember <laughs> in 1968 when she and Dickie were staying at the King Eddie Hotel, I did Liz's makeup. You're kidding. I wouldn't lie. I remember this one day, I was doing Liz's eyes and they really are violet too. And Dickie kind of came bursting into the hotel room and the two of them got into the most vitriolic argument I have ever seen. I mean, I literally freaked out. And they shoved me into a washroom with a bottle of scotch. I remember it vividly. And in 15 minutes, I drank the bottle, got drunk and sobered up again. I mean, I was literally <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> but one day I was doing it on stage and, and I looked and, and the guy whose name I will not say uh, was the, actually, the actual guy. The, the actual yeah. guy whose voice was clearly no exaggeration of mm -hmm. this was sitting right there. Mm. So I quickly went from this to saying that Liz Taylor is so dynamic because she has this power over people. I looked down and said, you know, you know she's a really good broad. <laughs> <laughs> and change. It didn't get any laughs, but I didn't get punched out. Well, that's good. <laughs> uh, you don't know if the guy was flat or defended. You don't care. No, 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 not really. Well, I mean, it, it was his voice. Yeah. I mean, he, he can't deny that yeah. that's what he spoke. Uh, we have to go away for a commercial, Martin, and uh, we'll be right back to continue right. this. Thank you for being here, <laughs> Mark.
Martin Short is here. Uh, where does that begin if you're doing an impersonation of a person? Well, it's tricky. Uh, if, if you want to do... Uh, I did Jerry Lewis on one of the shows, and, and, and I, I, the Lewis, the young kid Lewis was... You know, I had that from a long time ago. <laughs> but the hardest thing was getting the Today Lewis, and I found that once I cracked the laugh, and I, I would listen to the laugh, and finally I realized that it was just... It was kind of a variation of London Lee's laugh, but it wasn't. It was more... <laughs> <laughs> so then once you get, <laughs> you know, the thing is uh, that uh, they're afraid of a perfectionist, the studios. And if a Jerry Lewis anchor to get a distribution deal because of some fakakta 12-year-old with the pimples on his face who's head of the studio this week, who doesn't know from Hardly Working or the Aaron Boy or whatever, who only knows from Eva Braun with the big Fohaben or the airplane crashing through the thing. <laughs> Where is a Jerry Lewis supposed to find the love and the caring and the feeling and the good and the nice? And even if you do, it's not the good kind because of the variation of the different thing. <laughs> now, um, uh, we have some videotape of you doing somebody that, uh, I guess if you thought about it, it, it would become apparent that sooner or later people would be doing him. But uh, you, I guess you were the first one to actually do this man, huh? Yes, I believe so, yes. All right, this would be... Uh, it's, a, it's a Tang commercial. A Tang commercial, and do you want to tell them who you're doing, or just let them be pleasantly surprised? If or? they don't find out, then it was... Okay, uh, let's just... We'll, we'll, we'll roll it, we'll what see the who, hell. Yeah. All right, this is, uh, once again, uh, Mr. Martin Short, uh, a scene uh, from a recent SCTV television program. <laughs> oh, Martin, hey, me up, Captain Kirk, me up! That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, right on the money. Oh. Uh, tell me about uh, now. What is the status of the program now? Uh, SCT well, I guess SCTV is uh, canceled. It, it <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not going to be on at 12.30 to 2 on NBC. That we know. Mm -hmm. It will probably be moved to 4.30 to 6 on Sunday. <laughs> opposite, opposite Catholic Mass. Uh, that seems to be the... Now, there, there, must, there must be another life uh, for this program, don't you think? No, I, there are certain... I mean, there are discussions going on about different people interested in doing the show, and, and I think that we'd like to do a movie t together. The money. The, everyone gets along so great, and yeah. they've known each other for so many years, and it's such a good working situation that I don't think anyone wants it to end, you know? Yeah. And... But you don't, you can't say any, at this time what's what's going on. Well, no, nothing's really resolved right now. I'm yeah. just uh, hanging down, out down here cleaning fish. <laughs> um, well, you're certainly a terrific addition to the uh, an already great cast, and uh, you know, good luck uh, with everything, Martin. And thank you very much for being here again. Thank you, David. <laughs> Mr. Martin Short, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Got you covered, Indiana. No shit. <laughs> okay. Thank you, folks. Uh, Martin, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank our studio audience. You folks were terrific, as always. Uh, also, my thanks to Mariel Hemingway tonight, Jane Curtin. Again, Mr. Martin Short from NBC Sports, Marv Albert. Uh, Paul Schaefer and the organization. Thanks, guys, for being here. Uh, also, thanks to Bill Wendell, our announcer. Monday, actress Louise Lassie will be here. Have a good weekend. Good night, folks.
My next guest is a very funny man who has been involved with Second City, also the motion pictures Animal House, Stripes, Caddyshack, and his latest project, National Lampoon's Vacation, which he directed and which opens July 29th. Please welcome Mr. Harold Ramos. Harold. Hi, Harold. Oh, nice to see you, sir. Uh, I thought you were uh, very funny in uh, Stripes. You played uh, Bill Murray's buddy yes. then, didn't you? Yeah, I thought a very nice job of that. Thank you. Also, I saw this uh, motion picture, uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, and I thought it was very funny. And uh, now, I saw it in a screening room by myself, and I laughed at actually one other guy, and we laughed. But when you're putting a movie together, and there is nobody around to watch but you guys, and you've done it and done it and done it, how do you know that it's going to get laughs when people see it in the theater? Uh, you don't. Yeah, uh, we, we laugh on the set a lot. Chevy, I have a real weakness for Chevy, so... As he would do the scenes, I, I, would, I would be howling. Mm -hmm. In fact, spoiling takes occasionally, laughing out loud behind the camera. And that's the last time I laughed. <laughs> Once we wrapped the film, that's it. You go into an editing room, and you're sitting in a dark room with an editor for hundreds of hours, and yeah. uh, just dead, totally dead. So Until you, you... you've got the film there, and uh, do, before it is released to the theaters, do, do audiences see it at all? Yeah, we, we tried it uh, three different times on audiences that we dragged down to Warner Brothers and made them watch our rough cut without music, and uh, we pretty much could tell where we were strong and where we were weak. So. Now, does their reaction make a major difference or just a little touch-up stuff? Uh, it could be major, yeah. We, uh, in our case, we, um, we had one ending shot, and it happens a lot in comedy. Uh, it's very hard to end because you never know where your biggest laugh is going to come. And occasionally, if your biggest laugh, uh, I've worked on films where the big laugh came like 40 minutes into the film, mm -hmm. which makes the, the last hour pretty slow. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we had, uh, our film was peaking a little early, so we wrote a new ending and shot it uh, with John Candy, as a matter of fact. Now, this film was, was based on uh, what was originally a short story uh, John Hughes wrote. Mm -hmm. And the original ending, which is the one you shot first, can you tell him what that was? Oh, uh, the, f the film basically involves, uh, Chevy plays a f father with two uh, young teenage children. He's promised them the vacation of their lives. Uh, they're headed cross-country in a car to uh, Disneyland. We couldn't call it Disneyland because uh, Disney Company likes to sue. Sure, they're protecting, yeah. <laughs> but they're protecting. They don't want people, you know, screwing around with Mickey and that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so in the original ending, uh, Chevy, they, they get to the park. I don't want to give it away, but uh, they don't have the time they bargained for. So Chevy gets so incensed, he buys a movie star map and drives to this character. We called him Roy Wally for Walt Disney. Drives to his house uh, with a, a gun he's recently purchased, <laughs> crashes through the gates, and uh, makes uh, Walt Disney sing and dance for him at gunpoint. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, it, it was too soft. The ending was too soft. So uh, <laughs> we went for something a little stronger. Now, in the in the uh, the short story, didn't didn't he actually shoot? Uh... He shoots him in the leg. Yeah. He shoots Disney in the leg. <laughs> <laughs> but he did not. Uh, Roy Wally did not get shot in your original. No, ending. no. Yeah. Uh, this is a, uh, it's a very funny film. You know who was, who was, I thought, just great in it, and he's only in it for a second, is uh, Eugene Levy. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the very beginning, he, he does just a physical move there that uh, makes you laugh really hard. I mean, that's a real sign of good work. Well, he plays a car salesman who uh, he's, does... Uh, the trip begins with Chevy picking up the brand-new station wagon, and it's a bait-and-switch. He gets there, and the car he wanted is not there, and Eugene Levy plays a very sleazy car yeah. salesman. Yeah. <laughs> but he does one great take, the first one, I when think, he when, he, when he sees, he sees <laughs> Chevy rolling up. Yeah. Uh, now, th this movie has some uh, uh, myth, kind of uh, urban myth, popular beliefs that aren't true kind of things. And Animal House was sort of based on that also. Mm -hmm. uh, what would uh, give us an example of one in, in Vacation? In Vacation? Well, there's the... Uh, it's, it's apocryphal, but uh, people with, with dogs, when they travel with their dogs, occasionally they just uh, forget and leave them tied to the bumper when they, <laughs> when they uh, drive off down the road, and then uh, <laughs> they start hearing strange noises. And, uh, <laughs> and that's one of them. That's in the film. But uh, while we were shooting, <laughs> we were shooting in Durango, Colorado, and we were working out of a Holiday Inn there. And uh, sure enough, someone saw a station wagon pulling out of the Holiday Inn with a dog tied to the bumper. <laughs> Now, did you actually see it, or did a friend of yours no, see it? No, it was uh, definitely confirmed sighting. Yeah. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> was uh, was were you able to save the dog? No, they or? saved that one. Oh, yeah. that's good. 
Uh, it's a, that also is a very funny scene in the film. And then the one when they got the grandma up on top of the... Uh, yeah. yeah, that's uh, <laughs> interesting stuff. We have to uh, pause here, Harold. We'll be back uh, to continue <laughs> talking with Mr. Harold Reynolds. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We have uh, some, some, uh, a couple of minutes from the motion picture National Lampoon's Vacation. Harold, is there anything we should know before we take a look at it here? Uh, just that it's uh, late at night, the first day out on the road, uh, and Chevy's been pushing it a little bit. He's been right. driving for a while. This is the happy American family on a vacation of a lifetime. And uh, watch the monitors, and as always, at home. Damn, the wheel's all screwed up. You hear? Very funny. Very nice. The, the two kids in the movie are very good also, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Anthony Michael Hall and Dana Barron. Yeah. We, we looked at about 300 children. They're, we... they're very cute. Very good. Uh, before you got into the world of uh, big-time motion pictures, one of the jobs you had was uh, editing Playboy party jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. What kind of a job is that? Uh... <laughs> This is a job. I had been teaching school and freelancing a little for newspapers in Chicago, and I, I went to Playboy. It was always my dream to work at Playboy because I'd grown up in Chicago. Meet Hef, hang around Meet, in your pajamas, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> drink Pepsi. So uh, I went to apply for the job. I didn't know what job I was applying for. I just showed him some of my stories. And uh, he said, we've got an opening. It's a party jokes editor. We're considering a high school kid for the job. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, all right, I, this is a job I need. So I, uh, he, he gave me a stack of jokes, about 500 jokes. He said, pick the best ones, write, write up the ones you like in our style. So the jokes were, uh, it turned out to be typical of the jokes that came in when I got the job. But uh, the, the average joke was uh, set on a farm. It usually involves one or two farm animals and uh, <laughs> a salesman. So I went right for the Playboy style. I changed the farmer to a young ad exec in New York. <laughs> <laughs> and I did a good job, so uh, they hired me. And, and after that, I got, uh, I read a thousand jokes a day from oh the readers. Oh, my. Good. And 99% were jokes that I'd heard the day before, reading my thousand. No kidding. Yeah. About 99% yeah. repeats. And from all over the country and? And Europe. <laughs> and, Europe. and and rural areas also. A lot of rural yeah. Uh, areas, yeah. Uh, also, I want to mention real quick, Harold, your uh, little girl is in this movie, isn't she? Yes, she is. She plays, <laughs> it's an awful thing you've done to her. You've cast her as a, just a terrible uh, circumstance for a young girl. Is she all, all right after that? Oh, yeah. She, next, she said she'd like a part with, with dialogue, though. Uh, <laughs> do you want to tell them what it is, or should we oh, let Oh, there's a poor farm family. Uh, the, co <laughs> the cousins that they visit. His own uh, daughter. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Uh, well, Chevy meets the cousins, and uh, their cousin is played by Randy Quaid, who's quite a good actor, and uh, when, as he introduces the kids, uh, my daughter is, is playing Randy's daughter, Daisy Mabel, and uh, Chevy says, well, how are, you, how are you, little girl? And she doesn't speak, and Randy says, uh, she was born without a tongue, Clark. There you go, <laughs> born without a tongue, so... But she whistles like a bird and eats like a horse. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we'll be right back, folks. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Uh, Harold, pleasure meeting you. Thank Same you very much, you. and good luck. Continued success to you, sir. My apologies to Mary Lou Larson. We ran out of time. She will be rescheduled for another night. I'm awfully sorry about that. Also, my thanks to Linda Ellerby, uh, and thanks to Paul and Bill. Folks, have a good weekend. Thank you, and good night. I want to thank you for letting me on the show. No, no, you're doing us a favor by coming back. Every really? Time no, I appreciate this. Uh, what do you want to do tonight? I don't care. Whatever you want to, you know. Anything is fine with me. I like uh, pretty much everything you do, John. It's, what's the deal? A fly. Big fly. Yeah. Well, you're used to that. You live on a farm now, right? Fly. I'm living on a farm, yeah. yeah. Well, that's not a fly. That's a wasp, see? That's a wasp. That is the biggest wasp I have ever seen. Huh. You got so, an animal act on here or something? No, like? I don't know. Now, anyway, when you come out tonight, uh, we just talk about the farm and... Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Just in your family. Aha. Right? Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. You see? You got a nest up there. Oh, yeah. Got a big wasp. All right, well, look. We'll, well, just... we should get that down yeah, now. Yeah, well, 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 maybe the weekend. Well, we'd better do it now. Look okay. at the size of them. Uh, I'm going to have to go, John. Um... It's like the size of my fist. Okay, I'm, I'll see I'll see you out there. It'll be great. Don't worry well, about it. Are we going to take care of this now? You know, we're off tomorrow. Maybe Saturday. No, I, I do it now. I mean, a yeah. bite from that could be fatal. Okay, well, I'll see you out on there. David, I wouldn't... All right. Don't leave it. <laughs> As uh, I mentioned before, we have a uh, great show tonight. Uh, two of our uh, uh, favorite folks are here. John Candy, my first guest tonight, a very funny writer and performer. He was a member, as you know, of the cast of SCTV, which was on this network, and he can currently be seen in the motion picture National Lampoon's Vacation and soon in a film called Going Berserk. Please welcome John Candy. John. For uh, coming Lean back here. You're Thank a, you. You're a, uh, you're a very nice man. And uh, it, when you perform on the screen... <laughs> no, you are. You're a I nice guy. I appreciate that. But I, and that's one of the qualities that uh, comes through when you perform. And I, and I think that's why you're so popular in, in the work you do, in addition to being a very funny guy. Oh, I think, and I reciprocate. I'll say the same thing about you. Well, Wonderful guy. You don't need to say that. <laughs> but, <laughs> I want to. Uh, it's so easy doing this show. Thank you very much for coming back. Now, uh, is this true that you bought a... Uh, a house in the country and tell us what country in Canada <laughs> right near Mellonville <laughs> it's, uh, a good place we um, I was sitting on the toilet one day uh, looking at the one ads and uh, I wanted to get out of the house I was living in and I saw this great, great Could, thing couldn't in the you paper. have just been sitting at the dining room table <laughs> some great thoughts come out of there what a, what a, and uh, it's a country estate, 10 acres, pond, barn. Now, estate, that, you know, uh, manicured shrubs that and lawn. That a lot of images yeah. in my mind. Oriental gardens mm -hmm. and so forth. And the price was right. So I said, Rose, honey, I got it. This is it. Rose. This is my wife. I see. I yelled out. <laughs> so I went out there that day. Now, how far out, really? This Seriously. about 40 miles outside of Toronto mm -hmm. in a snowstorm and bought the place. No real estate agent. <laughs> I didn't notice the running water in the snowstorm uh -huh. that was going through the house. Oh, through the house, yeah. <laughs> it didn't dawn on me. I just, it was my first house, and I bought a house, and it was great. Uh-huh. Oh, I got it for you, Jen. Don't worry. I got it right there, buddy. And uh, it turned out I got uh, swamp property. I moved in in July. They wouldn't let me come in in the spring when the water was running. <laughs> and, uh, so I had a lot of fun with that. I've been doing that for three years. It's actually... Kind of every movie I do kind of pays for another stone. So, <laughs> so you're trying to create a landfill there to offset the swamp? We're on a... I learned about water tables. We're I know real, nothing about water We're on a real high one. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of water running through our place. Our house is here and the water's up here. Yeah. And it wants to get over there. <laughs> and it does. Sure. It goes right through. Now I've channeled it all around it. Now my grass turned brown. So now my lawn is no good. So now I have to put an irrigation system in. That it's seems boring, odd because you, no, no, it's not boring, but it seems odd that you have to irrigate a place that's already underwater, pretty much. I have to tap the sources where I tapped it already. I see. But a lot of crushed stone, uh -huh. a lot of weeping tile. A lot of what? Weeping tile. Weeping tile. This goes underneath it. Yeah. I have to do the whole foundation of the house. Yeah. Had to dig that out. So it's been fun living there. <laughs> it sounds like a relaxing way to live. Yeah. Now, ma'am, just make an observation here. You don't strike me as, as a, uh, a country kind of guy. You seem like a man who enjoys the uh, niceties of an urban circumstance. Yeah. And if I didn't put so much money in that house, I would be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you I priced it out of the market. I, yeah. you know, nobody will believe me anymore. Do you, you, know? do you farm this land up there? Yes. 
Yes, I actually bought a tractor this summer, an old 1947 Massey Harris. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> the lines aren't exactly even. <laughs> It was my first time. I plowed the field. You, you plow. Now, what, plowed a field. what will you plant? Uh, just grass. Just, just, just grass. <laughs> Ten acres I don't want to push it. I don't no. want to push it. Grass yeah. I can deal with. I don't want to push it with barley or anything. No, no. <laughs> you got to look after that. Now, is, is Lawn your, you can kind of deal with. Is your wife happy up there, or does she feel kind of isolated and remote? That's, that's a good way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> How I mean, close, we haven't got a choice at this point. How close is your nearest neighbor? They're, they're pretty close. I mean, there's about 10 houses on the street. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're far enough you can, you know, their house is looking at distance and it's very pretty. It's like an Andrew Wyeth painting. But you are happy up there. Yeah, I love it up there. All right, that's good. Yeah, aside uh, from all that. We, we have to go away for a commercial. Okay. And when we come back, I want to talk about your trip cross country. Okay. Just like uh, the movie you were in. Yes. Vacation. Uh, John Candy and I will be right back, folks. <laughs> Before we go on, John, tell us about SCTV. It's now going to be on, as we mentioned, a, kind of a cable concern. On a cable, yeah. Yeah. They were um, excommunicated from NBC, <laughs> so to speak. Are and, you going to uh, be part of the new... Uh, no, I left the show. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's... Oh, that's oh, you what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm farming now. I can't. <laughs> I can spend some time up there. <laughs> Is there a chance that you will be making guest Oh, yeah, I'll be in and out of there, yeah doing some work on it, but yeah. it's, uh, for me right now... Well, you were at it uh, for a, a long, long time. People yeah, may not realize. Yeah, about 10 years. I've been with Second City uh, from the stage show mm -hmm. through the TV show, and I was going to stick around for a watch, really. You, know, I just, <laughs> <laughs> you reach a point, you know, I couldn't... Yeah. Um, there wasn't much more I could offer the show. Yeah. So I guess new blood comes in. Yeah, but you were, you were terrific on that show. You were oh, terrific. It was fun to do. It was a great show to do. Oh, yeah. Tell me about your trip cross-country. Where did it begin, why did it begin, and what happened? <clears throat> Well, it was one of those, I hate flying. I don't like flying, and uh, I used to love cross-country drives when I was a kid. And it's, you know, when you're a kid, the, what, what you remember as a kid really isn't what happened. We <laughs> left uh, <laughs> Some things still stick, like how long is it going to take? Are we almost there? Yeah. And you start playing the mileage game, you know, and you start hitting posts all the time, you know. Yeah. Um, we left Los Angeles to head for Toronto, my wife, you, my daughter, yeah. and myself. And I was very concerned, because she's three, how she's going to deal with a long trip. She was great. I was, uh, I was like this. You know, like Is this uh, a new car, an old car? It was a new car. I leased the car down in the States, in Los Angeles, and we we're going to drive it back and uh, spend the summer up at the farm, yeah. and then drive it back. It sounds good. It was great. We started, um, I got through to Oklahoma, and it all fell apart. It was just all kind what of... happened in Oklahoma? I wasn't even speeding that much. <laughs> yeah. I still don't think I was going that fast. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I didn't see him. I didn't see... Uh, I saw lights flashing on the side, and that was it. I looked around, and all of a sudden, the cherries came on. Mm. So he pulls me over, and he goes for his gun. Well, he Whoa. sees me come out. Uh, yeah. You know. And I'm all smiles with him. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Down here in the back. And uh, they took my license away. In Oklahoma, they can take your license, physically take your license. No kidding, I didn't know that. Yep. Just for a minor infraction? Uh, apparently so. Yeah, 55. Does it say 56? <laughs> no, sir. Oh, one of, one of those guys, huh? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Then you do 55. Yeah. All right. Now, I think you'd better pull over and have a coffee. Uh -huh. I said, where are you heading? I said, Toronto. Do you plan to get there in the next hour? <laughs> no. I said, you better slow down. Go grab a coffee. Yeah. And he let me off. He gave me a bit of a break. Now, how do you get your license like $100 back? Like $100 down to 50 Oh. What you do is you, uh, you're driving the rest of the trip now is with a permit. Like, uh, you have to drive with an adult. <laughs> <laughs> And if you get caught again in another state, you can get arrested. There are certain states creeping towards uh, New York yeah. that uh, they will take you in jail. And if you don't have the money, 
whatever that figure is that they have in their head at the time. <laughs> have you got $612 on you? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, come on with me. Let's go. So, <laughs> you got to make these things up as they go. Yeah. And that wasn't bad enough. I started, I was doing the speed limit all the way back. I thought, all right, all right, I don't want to get caught. No. I get to the Buffalo, to the, to the Canadian Customs. You're home free. I'm home free. Sure. The kid at the booth recognizes me. Hi, Mr. LaRue, how are you? Come on in. You know? <laughs> Thanks very much, you know. I said, oh, that's an American car, isn't it? I said, yes, it is. Ah. Oh. Well, just go over and see that guy over there, and, and uh, it'll be fine. He'll just give you papers, no problem. And I found one of the oldest, uh, one of the oldest customs officials uh, was sitting there. I think it was his last day or something. He was just waiting. He was just reading a paper, you know, drinking coffee. And I stood in front of him for about five minutes. And some young kid, and all these kids recognized me, and they wanted to help. And just as one kid was about to say, I'll take care of him, and he said, no, nah, he's mine. <laughs> and he just folded it up. I said, it's an American car? I said, yes, it is. I'm a Canadian, though. He said, can't come in. What do I do? Go back. <laughs> I, said, I can't believe what you're saying. And it's raining now, and my daughter's crying, and my wife is starting to cry. And I'm ready to kill him. <clears throat> and he's, uh, he says, you don't understand, do you? You just don't understand. He says, this is Canada. <laughs> this is Canada. That's an American car. I said, yes. A Canadian could have leased that car to you. You're taking a job away from a Canadian. I said, well, wait a minute. I don't follow your logic here. You know, I'm just, I'm not going to leave it here. I'm not stealing a car. I'm bringing it back. Yeah. He says, all right. After a long rigmarole, he gave me three days in the country and $514, <laughs> which I had. When yeah, I pulled, you had I that amount. I'm just lucky for me. And I, and I pulled that out. And uh, he said, you got three days. You can take the car in and get it out. Yeah. Or we're going to impound your car. Did you then you got turn it loose? You know? Did you keep it or turn it loose? No, I kept it. Kept I went down to Customs downtown in Toronto. Get it all straight guys, all the guy's a jerk. <laughs> Go right ahead. You got the car for the whole summer. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Canada. We got a pause Visit. here, John, You'll love for it. station identification. Uh, we'll be back. More of John Canada. That's a great story. Yes, tonight on Late Night, join us for a special all-entertainment show, a salute to good times with Connie Chung. Connie Chung? Is that right? And a man who's written down everybody's name he ever met. What a show. Yeah. <laughs> Connie Chung. Well, tonight on Late Night, join us for a special all-entertainment show, a salute to good times with who else? Connie Chung. And a man who's written down the name of everyone he's ever met. <laughs> it was not what I had expected from what they did before. Welcome back. Uh, Monday on this program, ladies and gentlemen, we get calls all the time. What are you doing Monday? Well, Connie Chung will be here Monday. And uh, we'll also meet a man who has written down the name of everyone who he has ever met. His name is Lowell Davis, by the way. Terry Garr will be later on this program, or be here later on this program. And John Candy is here now. Uh, and you were telling us about the uh, cross-country trip. You're also, in, is it two movies that are out now? Uh, Going Berserk, we mentioned. Vacation is out now. Vacation is out. I'm and, sorry. Uh, That's doing quite well, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Didn't get a piece of that one either. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Going Berserk, what is that? That's a film uh, I did for Universal last summer. It'll be coming out in November with Joe Flaherty and Eugene Levy, and David Steinberg directed that. Mm -hmm. And uh, a movie so called Splash, coming out in February. Ron Howard directed with Eugene Levy and Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. Uh -huh. And these... Uh, and Shecky Green. These are funny films, Goodman, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, is, what is Splash about? Splash? Yeah. It's a mermaid movie, is what it is. Um, I play the brother of Tom Hanks, and he falls in love with his mermaid. Oh. So it's... Thank you. I 
just want to tell you. Hello, everybody. I love New York in June. <laughs> I just want to tell you something. This man is my twin brother. Yes. <laughs> we'll be working mother, together. My mother soon. had a very hard time. <laughs> I just wanted to wish him luck. I think you're terrific. I watch you all the time. And uh, what? What? I what did I do? Know. I just have the feeling the whole stage is going to go like no! this. You know, you know. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. I just came in to say hello. Come on, sit down. Nice to meet you. That's why I like coming on your show. Dom DeLuise. Dom DeLuise. Yep. And uh, had you worked with this man before? Never. Yeah. <laughs> Seemed like a very nice guy. I've Great never guy. met him before. Very funny man. But uh, it was nice to see him. Just sort Great of. Great to see him. In. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Uh... I just saw him the other night in a movie. David. Look on the back of my neck. Is there something crawling there? Yeah. Did it come from that nest? Well, it could have, yeah. It's a wasp. Yeah. Do you mind uh, kind of flicking it off? Just be very careful. Right. Okay, that does it. That does it. I'm going to take care of this, David. Can I have that fogger and sack you keep behind there? John, you don't, you don't need... No, no, I want to do this. I want to get it out now. You've got people coming out. Dom DeLuise could have got bit. You could have got a lawsuit on your hand. So, John, you don't have to do I this. Want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to take care of this. Yeah, All right, people... I want this sealed off. I don't want any wasps in the audience. All right, any the ladder over here, please. John, you don't... Along. You don't just David, back over trust me, don't... let me do this. All right. Just let me do this, all right? If you don't all right, get a long to... broom and an acetylene torch. Right, but... <laughs> John, you know, we could, uh, the, after the show, they can get it right out of there. Please, I'd like to just kind of warm them up there. There they are. That got them. That got them. That got them mad. That got them mad. <laughs> You see the broom? You see the broom? Oh, yeah. John? All right. Can I do anything for you? No, no, really. It's fine. Just start the show, David. I'll have it all fine. Just go on with the show? Yeah, okay, go on with the show. I'll be out in a few minutes. All right. Uh, okay, we'll, um, while, while John's uh, tidying Whoa. up with our Whoa. wasp problem, we'll, uh, Whoa. We'll, we'll go away now. We'll, We'll be right back with uh, Terry Gar and who knows what else. Thank you, gentlemen. Paul Schaefer. And the band, uh, folks, and uh, we're uh, happy to have them. Uh, my, my next guest here is, uh, it's always a pleasure to welcome her to this program. She is a uh, fine actress who was, uh, last time she was on the show, she was just getting ready to go. Some more trouble with Dom DeLuise. Who knows? If... All right. I got him. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, Great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you got some. Uh, They're all in here. You got some nasty. <laughs> Not to worry. <laughs> you got some nasty looking. Oh, this show. <laughs> no longer have a wash problem on this show. Please, John. You didn't have to do that, but I'm nope. glad you did. Glad I did. Thank you very much, buddy. David, thank Come you kindly. Come back and see us anytime. I'm going to get rid of these. All right. Thank All you, right. sir. Job well done. The Lost Show. What a guy, huh? <laughs> what a guy. Uh, I don't know much about medicine, but those were some nasty-looking bites. I, I'd have those looked into. Anyway...
Everybody who uh, helped out with the phone calls tonight will receive one of these lovely Late Night with David Letterman sponges. And uh, my thanks again to everyone who participated. That I'm sorry that woman sounded like she might have been steamed. My first guests tonight became famous as co-hosts of their own television program, The Great White North. And there they are. They have just completed their first movie together entitled Strange Brew, soon to be released. And uh, we're going to meet them now and see if they have been affected by all of their Hollywood success. Please welcome Bob and Doug McKenzie. <laughs> confused and I'm sorry about this. I can never remember who is Bob, who is Doug. Oh, I'm Bob McKenzie. This is my brother Doug, eh? How's okay. it going, eh? All hey, right. now we got all this in one story. <laughs> Seems hard to believe that you could get all this in one now, story. Yeah, you are, you do look a little different. Now, what is the reason for uh, the way you're dressed here? We, we're hip. Yeah. <laughs> we did a movie eh, in Hollywood and uh, we was on uh, Melrose and uh, got some uh, hip Hollywood clothes. This is how they dress down there, eh? Melrose is a very kind of fashionable, trendy sort of boutique street. That's what we heard. Yeah. So we went down there, eh? Geez, these shades are so dark, I can hardly see. Maybe I'd Not me, I'm leaving mine on, eh? How's it going? Now, uh, it's pretty good. Now, you, you, it doesn't bother you to go out like this, huh? Oh, well, why? <laughs> some people have laughed at us, eh? But so, I mean, you know, when you've uh, achieved a certain level of notoriety, you've got to take some of it. Hey, these. look at his That's shoes, right. eh? Zoom in on his shoes. No, yeah, put them down, nice. eh? They look like bowling shoes. Not mine, eh? <laughs> look at his. His looks like girls' running shoes. Take off. They are not. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's certainly colorful. You, normally, you guys were in the heavy, kind of khaki-colored parkas and stuff. And Okay, here's what happened, David. Like, we was, uh, we was like, doing this sweating in 100 degrees heat, and uh, we had the opportunity to cut the lining of our coats out, but then we knew winter was coming, so then where would we be? You'd be screwed. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Can you say that on I TV? Don't, I don't know, but you, you would, sure. Kitty. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about your movie. You guys, in addition now to have been affected by the whole Hollywood experience, put together your own press release, press kit here. Yeah. Now, what is, is this unusual for the stars of the movie to do their own press kit? Well, what do you think? Don't look at me. You're on the hot seat. <laughs> well, yes, it, um, it is a little unusual. We believed that they needed our help and expertise, so we decided to offer them... Uh, what kind of stuff would we find in here if we... Well, like, you find stuff like a glossary of terms, a eh, mm -hmm. of what it is when you're a hoser. Right. So how to know certain words, like the word hoser, like proper use of the word a. Eh. You like, should get some smokes for here. Yeah, that's a beauty idea. <laughs> Have you got any smokes? A big fat pack, so it would build up my biceps. All right, we'll get you some smokes. Now, you were, you were, you were saying, uh, what was it, A? Yeah. Uh, know how to use the word A, know how to use when, the, when to use the word beauty, and to what it may apply. Now, eh? that one, tell me when you use the word. One earring, eh? That's very nice. That earring, for but example, you know is what? Beauty. That's a beauty earring. I could only, I could only buy them in a set. It's real hard to discipline. So I got two. You want it? Well, thank you very much. That's awfully nice of you. Thank you. I'll just put that over here. See, <laughs> See he's New York, eh? He hasn't gone Hollywood because he just put his uh, earring over there. <laughs> now, you guys also in here, you have, uh, you, you supply your own review of the film? Well, we wanted to save the reviewers some trouble. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> so, we thought if we wrote some of those things we've seen on Zelig, eh? Like, brilliant, bravo, all that stuff, where you didn't even know what the name of the movie was, yeah. eh? I think that's very thoughtful of you. For example, here, one of them, Cheech and Chong have never been funnier. Oh, that was when we got bored with it and started to get funny. I see. <laughs> All right, here's Okay, let me sit in the hot seat now. Okay, okay. you guys want to change seats? Yeah. All right, while, while they're changing seats, uh, we'll uh, take a break here uh, and come back to continue talking with uh, Bob and Doug now. Beauty. All right, now, as part of our continuing effort to keep you entertained, we took our cameras down to the streets of New York to ask people what they would like to see on late night television. I would like to know more about condiments and sauces. I'd like to know more about condiments and sauces. My topic today is sauces and condiments. I will discuss the difference between a sauce and a condiment. I will discuss what horseradish is, a sauce or a condiment. And I will discuss how horseradish is manufactured.
the program. Dave Thomas, Rick Moranis are here, ladies right, and gentlemen. Enough, enough and, of the craziness. And, uh, we're happy to have you guys here. Thanks. It's uh, we're on tour promoting the movie, so we thought we'd stop by your show. Now, uh, do you guys tour well? Do you enjoy that? Uh, yeah, yeah, we do. It's uh, it's been a long haul though, l till late at night sometimes. Sure. We're in uh, uh, L.A., Dallas, Chicago, Cleveland, Boston, and now here, and then we're going to Toronto to open the picture on uh, Friday. It opens everywhere. But that'll be very exciting, being back home in Toronto. You think so, opening. really? I think so. It seems like it should. You're not looking forward to it? No, I am looking forward to it. It's been working on the movie for a year, so yeah. I'm glad it's finally opening. And, and you're you, talking about ourselves for ten days straight, and we found out that it is possible to OD on your own ego. Really? You know? I haven't, haven't had that experience. <laughs> well, you're but, only on every night, I mean, you know. But you guys can... going back to Toronto, is, it, it seemed like it ought to be a kick. Well, actually, the picture opened uh, in Edmonton last weekend. Mm -hmm. um, the world's largest shopping center opened in Edmonton, and they launched a theater by uh, introducing this, this new theater complex with our movie. Yeah. So um, that's where the characters were actually born, and I'm sorry we couldn't get up there, but we were in Dallas for some reason. So, um, we're promoting in Dallas. That's yeah. the reason we No, but there. we couldn't get back to Edmonton. I mean, oh, I wanted wow. to go and you wanted to stay in Dallas. It's thousands of miles apart. Right, let's talk about this later. <laughs> anyway. Well, we were looking over uh, some the this information about you guys this afternoon, and you were actually nominated for Canada's highest civilian award. Is that, is that true? Is that? Yeah. What is Please, the award? No. Thank you. <laughs> it's, Thank uh, you. Thank you. It won't do any good. It's uh, the Order of Canada. It's, yeah. Uh, we were beat up by Norman Jewison. We'll get him. <laughs> Norman Jewison is a film director? Yes, and uh, he won the highest civilian award. And, uh, well, who gets to vote on this? I think a uh, bunch of guys in Hockey players. Parliament. <laughs> uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs and Montreal Canadiens get together Between uh, periods before and, training camp, uh -huh. and they sit around and talk about films, and they gave it to Norman Jewison. <laughs> <laughs> they loved In the Heat of the Night. You know, that was... uh, who else would have uh, been granted this award? Oh, all kinds of people. Um, Usually scientists and inventors. Mm -hmm. But they give the token awards to the arts. You know. Yeah. So you, you still get a shot. This is a lifetime achievement award, and you've got much, much more ahead of you. Yeah, this we, is what we're hoping. Uh, yeah. We think of maybe after the sequel we'll get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, w how did that strike you, being honored like that by your homeland? Was that a, a little... Uh, well, actually, anybody, anybody can be nominated, and it was just one guy that nominated us. And um, Winning is the tough thing. That's a little tough, yeah. yeah. And we lost, so it's, it felt bad to lose. Now, this was the first, first movie that you guys have made, and I know that uh, you, there were people you wanted to have in your movie. Max von yeah, Sydow, for example, that's a pretty big Max right is in it. Max, yeah. we, we got it. But there were some that you... Yeah, we offered uh, cameo roles to... All right, um, let me interrupt you, and we'll announce who. This will be sort of like the announcing of the uh, Is this awards. a segue? Is this... Yeah, uh, yeah we've we got to go away for back. station. Don't go away. You're going to find out who when is we in come back, movie We'll why. find out who they would like to have had in their movie and, and why they ain't. We'll be right back. I would like more information on sauces. A sauce is a dressing. It's something that you would put on top of a pudding, or put on top of a salad, or put on top of pasta, or put on top of anything. It's, it's a liquid substance. It's actually for this show, just another night. Well, tonight on Late Night, shark hunter Captain Frank Mundus will be here. Also, actress Mary Kay Place and a special edition of Stupid Petrix, plus a look at New York City street etiquette. Thanks, Paul. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Thomas and uh, Rick Moranis are here tonight. Uh, later in this program, you'll meet Graham Nash. And tomorrow, actress Mary Kay Place, legendary shark hunter Captain Frank Mundus, whom I know you guys have worked with uh, for years and years. He did, yes. And that Vegas act for a while. It was so successful. Uh, also, we'll have the Stupid Petrix. That will be tomorrow night. Now... We've uh, done some of those, too, in our days. Yeah. Stupid, Stupid Petrix. Petrix. Yep. Uh, before we left, we've talked about... Uh, some of the people you would like to have had in your film. And yes. Did you actually approach these Yeah, folks? we offered um, cameos to uh, Woody Allen, Steven Spielberg, and uh, Ebert and Siskel, and we were turned down these by are all the people of them. we wanted to work with. <laughs> uh, sure. Now, what would they have done, the folks? Um, 
Well, the Boys. thing for uh, uh, Spielberg was we have a part in the movie where uh, we're racing towards Oktoberfest, and uh, we weren't going to be able to make it in time. And uh, one of us was going to reach for the radio, call, ask for a patch in, call Hollywood, and get Spielberg. Cut to Spielberg in his office, sitting, talking to an alien. He picks up the phone and says, uh, yeah, uh-huh, well, where are you in your story right now? Yeah, hey, sure, you can do it. Yeah, I would. Go ahead, do it. And then the cars were going to fly. You know, that would have been at great. that point. Yeah. Yeah. But he said he didn't want to act. He said after Blues Brothers, he'd had it with acting. Yeah. So, uh, but I know that he was, a, uh, and still is, a big fan of the stuff you guys do on. Yeah. Uh, what about Woody Allen? What did you have planned? Well, there's for? a sequence in the uh, theater where the movie is playing in the movie where um, people are bad-mouthing it. We wanted to pull Woody Allen from behind one of the billboard, one of the uh, sandwich boards and explain why the movie was better than it was, the way he did to McLuhan. But he said after Blues Brothers, he just didn't want to... <laughs> <laughs> And what about uh, the movie reviewers, uh, Siskel and Ebert? What we wanted them to review the movie yeah, after the, the movie. And they said, no, nah, it would be a conflict. Yeah. So now they're reviewing it next week on their show. Uh, these are all great ideas, though. But I'd like to review their show if we got some time. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have some time to take a look at a piece of a film from uh, the motion picture Strange Brew, soon to be released. Is it going to be released in uh, this country simultaneous? simultaneously with? this Friday? What are we going to look at here, David? A clip. A uh, clip? <laughs> A little bit of a chase sequence, uh, which uh, goes underwater, and uh, it isn't self-explanatory, but to explain it, it'd probably take about a, a lot more time than you'd be willing to give me, so maybe All we should right. just... It's, it's, a a clip. Clip. Self, it's a It's a self-explanatory clip, and uh, a chase <laughs> scene, and uh, Woody Allen will not be in this uh, piece of film. <laughs> it was hard doing that underwater. It looks very hard. First of all, tell me about the uh, the stunt. That was a very difficult, dangerous stunt with the van going yeah. into the water, wasn't it? We had a guy named Jerome Tiberjan, a crazy French-Canadian that drove that van at 60 miles an hour up a 30-foot ramp, 150 feet out into the air, and went down 50 feet into this really muddy water. And uh, he had a... Lake Ontario, Yeah, right? at, in November, which is not a place you want to be. We did that underwater stuff in the van, and I realized when you're underwater, after all those times you fantasize, what would I do if my car went... You'd drown, that's what sure. you'd do if your car went underwater. Now, when you guys were writing this film, did you realize that you were jeopardizing someone's life by putting in the van sequence where it crashes into the uh, lake? We, we gave him every out we could, <laughs> and uh, he said, no, I want to do it, and I want the money. Yeah. But it so. cuts from Lake Ontario, where he goes into the saucer tank in Culver City, MGM, 73 degrees outside, scuba safety guys all over the place for us. So, but you guys were actually underwater for quite a while yourself. Yeah, about three hours we were underwater yeah. shooting yeah. that scene. It was fun. Yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. Well, it wasn't it's... all fun. It was scary. Somehow. Well, I wore a wetsuit. It was fun for me. He it, thought, no, nah, I don't need a wetsuit. It's opening in both countries on Friday. Yes. Uh, continued success to you guys. Thank you very much for Thank being you. back. Thank you very much. Uh, Rick Moranis and David Thomas, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with Graham Nash. I'd like to see what of that condiment. A condiment is something that can stand alone, stand by itself. A condiment is something that has unique characteristics that are unlike anything else. And that brings us to horseradish. Seems pretty nice, and I think we'll have uh, plenty of fun. Oh, my pleasure, Dave. Uh, glad to be here. Yeah. Hey, who else is on the show tonight? Well, uh, first of all, there's Fran Lebowitz, and then uh, you, and uh, after that we wait, have... Wait, wait, Dave. Fran Lebowitz, then me? <laughs> Fran, then me? <laughs> yeah, that was the, uh, the order we figured out at the meeting for the, for the billing on tonight's show. I know, but my name was announced second, you see. Isn't that uh, a little arbitrary? Well, uh, no, I, I do, I want to be fair about this. What would you suggest? Oh, I don't know. How about uh, Home Run Derby? Uh, you mean Home Run Derby, like hitting home run baseballs derby. and whoever hits one the farthest gets to be first? <laughs> um, Seems to be a kind of fair thing. I don't know. Okay, well, let's get Fran out here. Is Fran over there? Fran? Hi. Um, I'm sorry to do this to you, but, but John wants to play home run oh, derby. You don't mind, do you, Fran? Do it all the time. Great. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll just go on down there, and, and sure. whoever knocks the ball the farthest gets top billing for the show. Seems fair. Okay. Seems fair. All right, go on. That's right. That's exactly. You see? All right. It's just a name thing. Seems kind of unorthodox. Paul, could we... Uh,
Now, is it okay with you, John, if, if uh, Fran goes first? That's fine. That's fine. Okay, Fran. He's taller. He is a little taller. He's a little everything. <laughs> you want to you wanna throw these to yourself, or? You can hold it. Three balls. You got to clear the railing, and the farthest one gets top billing. No, no, stand right over here. All right. Play fair, huh? All right. Right on the line. Three balls. Good luck. Two more. It did not clear the railing. I was never good in gym. No, it was a very nice swing. Almost. One more. Very close. Come on, friend. Well, it actually cleared that railing. All right, Fran, very nice job. Thank you very much. You did a very nice job. Now, this is... John, if you want top billing, this is, this is the distance you have to beat. That's it? All right, there you are. Good luck to you, sir. Oh. Jack Nars on Beat the Clock. <laughs> Jack Nars. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, my God. Fran, I'm awfully sorry. I'm awfully sorry. There's no need to hit Fran. a third ball. John, you're the winner. You'll be a top billing Thank tonight. You. Thank you very Thank much. You very Thanks, much. Fran. I certainly appreciate it. Hi. Welcome back to the show. We got a uh, nice program for you. John Candy will be here in just a minute, and David Sanborn is performing with our band all night, and we're happy about that. And he will also be playing uh, his new single with Paul and the guys uh, later in the show. Fran Leibowitz is here, and we have sponges for everybody we talk to in the studio audience. What else? Oh, uh, we also may repair my desk later in the show. There is, uh, for the last uh, year and eight months on this program, we've had a, a shelf down here that, I, there, I did it again keep kicking and uh, we've not used the shelf uh, at all so if we have time tonight we're going to bring out the power tools and show you at home how, how you can take a shelf out of your desk if you ever need to so uh, by all means uh, wake the kids and phone the neighbors about that uh, anything else I'm leaving out let's let's just introduce our first guest we met him earlier in the show uh, it's always a pleasure to have him here he's been with us several times uh, an alumni of SCTV he is starring in a brand new film which opens on the 28th of this month entitled going berserk I believe that's a Bergman film, isn't it, John? I think so. Please welcome John Candy. Johnny! Johnny! Candy. Nice to see you. Good to see you. How are I, you doing? I love it when you're on the show. You're, uh, you just, you make everybody feel good. You're very funny, likable. And I pay money. money. <laughs> no, no. We're always uh, we're delighted enough. to have you here. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, well, you were the, uh, the Grand Marshal, let me get this right, of some Canadian holiday. It's not Thanksgiving. It's... Oktoberfest. All right. It's a German beer fest. Uh, Is this a major Kitchener. holiday? It's a major, well, it's on our Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's on the 14th of October. And in the Kitchener-Waterloo area, it's the Twin Cities of Ontario. <laughs> you have somebody here from there? <laughs> uh, there's 300,000 people line up uh, to watch this parade. And uh, I was the Grand Marshal riding in the front. How were you selected to be the Grand Marshal? Uh, I was two days before. I think uh, most of the people turned it down. <laughs> I don't know. We were busy. They called me uh -huh. two days before, and they asked me if I'd come out. And I was very flattered that they did. And what do you do as the Grand Marshal? You just sit in a car. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> That's probably what you'd been you doing that day anyway. Huh? I would have done that anyway. Yeah. Uh, then you go and drink beer. Yeah. Now, uh, and schnapps. Do you, do you wave to the folks? Do they know who you are? Do they come rushing to the car? Or? Well, I was fortunate. I had the Smurfs with me. <laughs> uh, they were running alongside, uh -huh. so uh, and I was riding in a new Corvette. Oh, that's nice. So between the Corvette, the Smurfs, and myself, we kind of covered some bases. Yeah. And some very good-looking girls were holding a sign. That's nice. So now, fun. did you did you drink while you were in the parade at all? Do you not drink? in the parade. You're not allowed to drink in the parade. Uh huh. Did you drink before or after the parade? Uh, right after. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. They make you drink. And how long was the parade itself? Uh, it was a two-hour parade. Yeah. It was a long parade. 
And uh, you enjoyed yourself? I had a ball. It was the first time I'd ever done anything like that. Yeah. Now it's a new career for me. <laughs> <laughs> Being it's grand marshalling parades. I don't get paid much, but it's a good gig. Uh, <laughs> now, when you were here the last time, you had just you had uh, some trip from Los Angeles to Toronto. Right. Uh, you went through Oklahoma and Texas and had some trouble at the border up in. Yeah. Uh, now, anything. Uh, I had happened? I had to bring the car back, as you recall. Oh, that's right. You were taking, taking a new car you purchased in L.A. back to Toronto. An American car into Canada. Yeah. And then I had to take the car back to the States. Yeah. Now, how was that? Well, it was only a 90-mile drive to the border, and they weren't going to let me in. They would not let you back in the no, States? No, the now. American side would not let me in because I was Canadian driving an American car. Uh-huh. So once again, I found a cross between George uh, C. Scott and uh, Patton, and uh, the officer that arrested me in the Oklahoma, he was just a very, he had a hawkish face to him. He just didn't like me at all. Not a good-natured guy. No. He didn't, uh, he didn't take, think it was funny. Uh-huh. And uh, did, was there gunplay or anything? No, they had guns. Oh, sure, they, they had have guns. guns yeah. Customs officials, I didn't realize that. On the American side, they have guns. Customs officials have guns. Uh -huh. And they stand there with their hand on it. And they're grilling my daughter. Ooh, now three how? Three and a half. Oh, no, that's not... <laughs> And what do you do? <laughs> so then what happened? Are you, do you have the car anymore? No, they allowed me after an hour. They had to strip search the car uh, to make sure uh, I wasn't bringing anything illegal into uh -huh. it. And I had to go through immigration. And uh, they grill you there as to uh, why you're coming into the States. We were going down for the Emmys. And I kept trying to push that, hoping that they oh, might yeah. have known the show or the Emmys. Didn't, Didn't work. No. Ooh. No. That's an ugly experience. It was. It was really uncomfortable. Well, it was really uncomfortable. well I'm glad you Much were Much like this right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we have to do a commercial, John, but we'll be right back. Don't worry about All right. it. We'll be right back. <laughs> Now, you and Paula, did you work together in uh, Toronto? Yes, we worked in Toronto, and we worked in uh, Nova Scotia. We, oh, well, that was the one time we did work together. Yes. We what traveled out to Nova Scotia? Scotia to do a live Canadian television show one time. What was the show? The Peter Zosky show. <laughs> oh, I actually, I, I did his show twice, but he was, he was not there either time. <laughs> That's true. He, he wasn't he, there? No, he was not there. He did, uh, he did uh, um, Canada After Dark or something. Right. That was the show. And then he also did uh, 90 Minutes Live. Mm-hmm. And he was not there either time. I never met Peter Zosky. Well, he's a good guy. He would have enjoyed me. <laughs> <laughs> we I, well, had fun. If, we if had you had wanted to meet Peter, you had to go to Nova Scotia. That's right. Oh, I, I went to Toronto. He was on the road a lot. Yeah. Uh, now, you're speaking of on the road, you're on the road a lot. You're, uh, you want to talk about Going Berserk, your, your new film? Yeah, it's a film coming out uh, October 28th that I did for Universal Pictures. Uh-huh. Uh, David Steinberg directed, uh, Joe Flaherty, Gene Levy, Good Allie cast. Mills, Pat Hingle, Dick Libertini yeah. involved with it. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to do. And you want to explain the premise here of the uh, film? Uh, this clip, I, I'm about to marry a congressman's daughter, and this is the first time I meet their family. I'm a chauffeur yeah. and not really uh, well off. I'm not really, really well liked either. So. Really well liked? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see for ourselves. <laughs> So, so, in, right. so the, you played the part of a, a limo driver trying to, to right. marry and into, into some money. Is that the deal? And I'm invited to a brunch at the uh, at the house. Okay, and as you mentioned, we have some film of that. Right. Right, here. and I've been up all night the night before. Okay. Any other pertinent data we should know I, about? I think I told the whole thing. All right, uh, John Candy here, and a scene from his uh, newest motion picture, Going Berserk. <laughs> It looks like a lot of fun. Very funny, John. And you're, you uh, want to mention that uh, this week you're hosting, uh, hosting Saturday, Night Saturday Night Live. Right. Yeah. Is that a lot of fun for you? Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> how is uh, how, how is the farm? You shouldn't you be up there overseeing? Isn't the big no, no. The rain's washed it away, David. It's it's all carried away down the road. Yes. It's on somebody else's property now. Oh, so <laughs> you and the family. No worries. Got a motel. That's and right. Help with the farm. That's right. Uh, how how many acres was that? Twenty. Twenty acres. Twenty acres now, of did, mud. But did you did you plant anything at all up there? No, not yet. I couldn't. It was just too wet. It really was. We but it, plowed the fields, and uh, uh -huh. it, it was just too muddy. But if it were not so muddy, would you have planted a crop? Of uh, grass. That's about it. Saw it or something. I would Put in like a, I like a 20 acre putting green. That's it. I'd love to do that. Well, that's a nice touch. Nice to see you again, John. Good to see you. And, Thank uh, you. For good me luck the with the show. Good luck with the film. And uh, good luck with the car. Where, whatever happened to that? Thank you. I burned it on the side of the road. John Candy, folks. We'll be back.
folks, welcome back to the show. Um, I'm 36 years old, and that's about the most peculiar thing I've ever seen. <laughs> My first guest tonight is one of the stars of the new SCTV series, which premieres on Cinemax Pay Television beginning November 22nd. She is also one of the most versatile comedy performers working today. Take a look at this videotape of some of the things she's done for us in the past, folks. Andrea Martin here on videotape. You'll be seeing it in a couple of seconds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andrea Martin. Andrea. Nice to see you again. Thank you very much. You look terrific. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you. you very much for being here. How, nice is the show coming here. along okay? It goes on the air in a couple of weeks. November 22nd? Yeah. yeah. In Cinemax? How do you, you get Cinemax? Uh, I don't know yet. I've had such bad luck with my cable. That That's I'll, what I'll I check heard, when yeah. I go home. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you, you're just eating something, I noticed, I, aren't you? I know, I'm sorry. I have a sore throat and I'm oh, trying I'm sorry to. to hear that. No, it's not a big thing. You want something to drink? That's a little water? Or no, or I had some more. I'm afraid to give it to you. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. <laughs> Now, uh, now that you're on uh, a cable circumstance here, how, how do you go about uh, uh, promoting a cable show as opposed to like a big time network show? Although this well, is big time. Isn't well, it? I don't have to say that. It's nice of you, but I, well, I'm doing your show. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I think right after this, I'll probably just be going door to door in Manhattan with an order form and a pencil. Oh, that's, that's good. That's probably sure. the only way you can um, get people to watch Cinemax. It's all by subscription. Yeah. No, sure. Now, uh, will you be doing anything different on this show? Uh, it's a little shorter, isn't it, this program? It's, it's 40 minutes. Yeah, there's no commercials at all. Uh -huh. um, I think people expect when you're on pay TV that you're either going to take your clothes off or say something dirty or something. Now, are you going to do any of that? I've done all that, yes. Oh, really? But, well, you know, live up to people's expectations. You have? No, we haven't. No, we haven't done that at all. That's the truth of the matter is that we just sort of stayed with the same kind of format. You know, I think the only difference is that now more people are going to be able to see it because we were on 1230 on NBC. Yeah. And now we're going to be on different times during the day. So maybe people with children and things can see it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, are you, what kind of things are you working on now for the show? I've been on a ship for the last two days. Did you see Dust Boat? Yeah. Did yeah. you see Porky's? No. I didn't Do you see know Porky's. what kind of film I know Porky's? about Porky's, but I didn't. Well, it's I didn't our see version it. of that called Dust Boobs. Uh -huh. So I've been on. <laughs> we've been doing that, and um, you saw a little bit of uh, Barbara Streisand. Yeah. So we're, we're doing a thing that's coming up with Barbara Streisand and Ruth Gordon in Rich and Jealous. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, and I know you see Officer and a Gentleman a lot, don't you, on cable yeah, here? Yeah, I've seen it now close to 30 times. That's right. <laughs> well, Eugene Levy, who does mm -hmm. a character called Sid Dithers, which is a lovely Jewish character, has written uh, uh, our version of it called Officer and a Gentile. So that will be coming up. Those are just a few things that are now, happening. Now, this, uh, this show, from the very beginning, not uh, the cable version, but SCTV TV has had a... You are still doing it in Canada? Yeah, still writing in... Well, we were writing in Los Angeles for a while. Now, I don't understand that. You write the show... You live in Toronto. Right. But you go to Los Angeles to write the show. Because half of us live in Los Angeles, so it was sort of a compromise I to see. write in L.A. and and tape in Toronto. But then you come back and you still tape it in right. Toronto. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, be with your family. You have a, yes. a brand new baby. Congratulations. Thank you very much. How are things going? Uh, you got suddenly you have a major family here. Yeah, I do. It's a serious proposition. It's actually great now with two of them. It's a lot easier than just one because it becomes obsessive. Uh -huh. And I'm very relaxed about it. So it's great. We oh, we were in L.A. all together. We were in Charlie Chaplin's home, which was something seven bedrooms and. Wow. It was amazing. Tri the shower, well, what do you think of when you think of Charlie Chaplin? Well, um, think of a legendary <laughs> film comedian. I think of him as being short. Well, I mean, also that he was a great comedian. But the shower was actually, the shower hit me here, and the pool was very short. And those are the only things that were sort of left over from his era. But yeah. Well, it was interesting when I was there. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's still interesting. Oh, it is. It's so sad. No, it's it interesting. It wasn't interesting at all. Sure, it's interesting. Thank you, David. Yeah, and we, we have many, many other interesting <laughs> things to talk about. We have to do a, a commercial deal here. Here, uh, We'll be back with uh, Andrea Martin. No, it was fine. Perfect. Here. <laughs> Tell me more he's about like, your new baby. He's six months old now. His name is Joseph. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, I don't know. Last night, let's see. Well, he's going to be christened next week. Well, that's a, that's a, sure, that's exciting. 
I guess it is. I was a little nervous about it because do you go to church all the time? Yeah. You do? Yeah, Good yeah you can't hardly get me out of church. No kidding. <laughs> well, um, I, I consider myself a religious person. I, you know, I listen to the Bible. I believe in the Bible and I believe in God. But I don't go to church very often. We, were very, we had to meet the priest. He's Anglican. That's Episcopalian in Canada's Anglican. Anyway, to make a long story short, we have to meet the priest in order to get him christened. We are very, very nervous about it. He came over last night, with, and he walked in the door with a red uh, crew neck sweater on. I said, mm. shall I call you Father or Reverend? He said, call me Glenn. <laughs> so I knew automatically we were off to a good start. And I said, would you like a cup of tea or a cup of coffee? And then my husband just joked me, he said, or a glass of scotch. He said, that would be fine, Bob. We went upstairs. He proceeded to drink a bottle, oh, not a bottle of scotch, this is terrible, a glass of scotch. He got very loose and was talking, and we were saying that we felt very badly we didn't go to church and all the time. And he said, I wouldn't be in church all that time if I wasn't a minister. I, I can't stand being under Gothic arches. He went on, no and then, oh, it was very interesting, got better. And then he said, and let me tell you, you know what Bette Midler said? <laughs> I can't tell you what she says, because it, it's obviously, uh -huh. what's well, a little color, but then we'll... Hint, hint at what Bette Midler said. She said many, many things. What would it... <laughs> well, it's a bad word. Uh-huh. You know, it's a bad word. No kidding. Yes, he Father, said that. Father Glenn said that. Father Glenn said it. And we shook hands. He said, bring the baby up next Sunday. We love him. And that was about it. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. That's great. No, actually, it was fantastic because it makes you... Well, it makes religion more accessible. Yeah. I thought it was... Pretty now, uh, the, you have uh, your husband writes on the show, SCTV. Yeah, he's It's all, uh, yeah. really a family deal now because yes, it is. Um, Martin Short is... That's right. He's my brother-in-law. He's your brother-in-law, right? right? And yeah, his... His wife is my husband's sister. Right. Right. And, uh, but doesn't he have a brother also writing on the show? Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. Mike Short. And right. uh, Joe Flaherty, does he Has have... his brother, uh, Paul and Dave, writing on the show. Yeah. Well, it's key. Is that sort of... Is that bad? No, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a big and time. And a little corrupt at the same time. No, no, I don't no, think I so. No, I think it's great, actually. Oh. It is. Yeah. How many, how many new shows will you be doing in a cycle now eight. for the show? Let me see. Six now, and then we have six coming up, and then six after that, 18 shows. Beginning November 22nd on right. Cinemax. Yeah. All right. Well, I know it's going to be a big success Thank for you. you. Nice to see you again, Thank Andrew. You very Thank much you very David. much for being okay. here, folks. Uh, we'll be right back uh, to take a look at my neighborhood, folks. We have a identification.